Some of you may remember that Sverige was planning an off-grid group in Romania. I thought it was simply another plot to steal people's money, as that sociopath has been doing that for years. I mean, he used his girlfriend's swollen black eye in a YouTube video to ask for money. What wouldn't this guy do? And for anyone unfamiliar, Sverige is a Latvian rotard from the Netherlands. Uh, rotard meaning he thinks he knows everything there is to know about nutrition and health by reading one book about the raw primal diet. He has a several year girlfriend named Luna who he actually had a baby with this past year. If you know, I don't know if they ate it yet, I don't know what's going on there. And is known in the past for various psychopathic behavior such as a school terrorist attack with a knife and eating a squirrel in public. Since Sverige is all-knowing, he decided it would be a good idea to team up with a bunch of strangers in a country he had never visited. But things went sour and a few stories came out about it. One of those being someone playing with his girlfriend Luna, uh, which I was met with an email, yo, it's me who fucked got his wife. Uh, from the Instagram user Yamastilli and I was actually able to get a hold of him and talk about his trip over there you know for about an hour but he preferred not to be recorded in the video himself you know so I'll be translating that conversation now overall this guy Yamastilli was pleasant level-headed and he seemed like he was just put in a bad situation if you are interested in talking to him you can reach out to that email of his yamastilli1080 at gmail.com. I'll refer to him as Yamastilli for his own privacy. That's not his real name. And he originally met Sverige at a meetup earlier in the year of 2020, probably in the spring. And this story takes place about midway through September of this year. I mean, you would think, you know, Sverige has been doing these meetups for years that he would have established more friends, more relationships, but uh, they probably all realized he was a crazy wacko-dacko psycho, so he has to make new friends every year. So the story starts with Sverige reaching out to Yamastili and asking him to stay at his place in Germany before Sverige headed off to Romania. And we know this is very typical of Sverige. He mooches off people, stays with them for free. Yamastili asked Sverige if Luna was coming, and she wasn't, you know, which was a red flag, seemed odd considering they had just had a child together and were both living in the Netherlands together. After getting to know Sverige a bit more, <laughs> Yamastili decided that Sverige was a really weird guy, and from the get-go, Sverige was telling Yamastili things like Luna threatened him with a knife three weeks into their relationship, all sorts of really personal crazy stuff. Three days after Sverige came, Luna showed up with their baby, and Yamastili decided to go with Romania with them because, you know, of what was going on in the world, and he did have other options, but, you know, Yamastili felt like this could be some type of adventure. So off they go, and after a flight and cab ride, they arrive in their Airbnb in Romania, which to me, doesn't sound too off-grid. You know, Sverige was making it sound like we're going to go into the woods and chop down some trees and build a cabin and stay there away. It was basically like a modern house next to a highway, just a regular Romanian village to my understanding. Sverige, Luna, Yamastili, as well as several others who had yet to arrive, agreed to split that monthly rent of around 900 euros. I mean, so they were only paying maybe 100, 150 each per month. On the very first night, Yamastili wakes up to loud screaming, banging, and Luna had locked Sverige in a room and tells Yamastili not to let Sverige out because he would hit her. I mean, Yamastili opened the door, and then Luna and Sverige apparently screamed at each other for the rest of the night, leading to Luna crying. I mean, who knows if this is all an act, if Luna and Sverige are just making some elaborate plan, or if this is actually how they behave with each other. Obvious relationship problems either way. Now, Yamastili happened to speak Dutch, 
which was Luna's primary language, and Sverige doesn't actually speak Dutch, you know, so Luna started hanging out with Yamastili. And being by themselves in the house, you know, with the relationship friction, Luna started messaging Yamastili on her phone, kind of like warming up to him, even complimenting him. Luna and Sverige in that house were actually sleeping in separate rooms. They weren't sleeping together. And there was one large main house, kind of like a villa, and a smaller separate guest house, which is where Yamastili was staying. However, Luna kept going over to the guest house to hang out with Yamastili and chat with him every single day. So after a few days of this, the rest of the off-grid group shows up. Uh, one was a younger couple in their 30s that had a baby, and the other two people were the husband's brother and his friend. Uh, they were all German. So five more people, including a young child, joined the house to make it eight. So about two weeks into the trip, Luna was hanging out with Yamastili every day, even wanted to go on walks with him late at night around 11 p.m. Obviously, you know, Sverige noticed and wanted to kick them both out despite, you know, nothing personal happening. Yamastili tried to distance himself from Luna as he didn't want to get involved, but Luna kept texting him, you know, because she noticed he was distancing himself. And I guess she kind of liked him and wanted to get closer. One night around that two week point, Luna messaged Yamastili asking if she could come over again and before Yamastili even responded, you know, she was in his room, I mean, probably a minute or two away. She said, and I quote, I want to lick you in Dutch. Ik wil je likken. Which is pretty funny. Ik wil je likken. And she said it in such an odd way that Yamastili thought she was joking, you know, so he joked back with her, you know, guiding them back to a normal conversation. Shortly after that, Sverid showed up. What are you doing here? You're always with him. It was dark. None of their faces could really be made out. Luna started panicking, getting nervous. Sverige eventually saying, you guys both leave tonight or I break both of your noses. So Luna followed Sverige back to the main house, arguing back and forth with him. Yamastili was sort of relieved and happy that he had a reason to go. Uh, as even before this event occurred, you know, Yamastili was already calling up his friend in Turkey, seeing what he should do. Luna actually admitted that she was the one coming on to Yamastili, but Sverij was still angry because he expected Yamastili to tell him that himself. Then Sverij kicks out both Yamastili and Luna, told them to sleep in the family's RV, which is parked in the driveway of the Airbnb, and I mean, that doesn't really make any sense if he didn't want them together. Uh, the family ended up helping Yamastili and Luna, you know, driving them to the supermarket, to a hotel. You know, the family saying, you know, don't worry, you know, when the month rent ends, we're going to find a solution together. Sverige then got mad at the family because of the family helping Yamastili and Luna, allegedly threatening the family with a knife and making them leave. Pack your stuff. As expected, the family ends up leaving as well, but they had a hard time getting their money back from Sverige. Uh, Yamastili didn't actually ask for his money back, and uh, then the two other German guys left because they didn't want to be with Crazy Daisy Sverige alone. Uh, Yamastili ended up staying with Luna in the hotel for about a week, and we all know what happens in hotels. Uh, she was actually planning on going to Turkey with Yamastili, but Sverige lured her back in, you know, by threatening he was going to kill himself and just typical narcissistic behavior. Even after Luna told him she had personal relations with Yamastili. I wonder if Luna's kid is actually Sverige's. <laughs> and just like that, happily ever after. The two psychos, Luna and Sverige, end up back in the Netherlands. Yamastili goes off to Turkey on his own to see his friend and is overall happy that he had the experience, learned some things. Yamastili's observation was that Sverige and Luna are very damaged individuals, you know, especially considering they were both telling Yamastili 
very personal stuff about each other that shouldn't be said, especially to a stranger. Uh, Sverige apparently addressed this in a long video on his Patreon, you know, which upon seeing, Yamastili responded that you know Sverige twisted the story, changed the facts around. Um, you know, like Sverige said that Yamastili came on to Luna, where it was actually the other way around. And I mean, here I'm inclined to believe uh, Yamastili, and you know, I wish he was willing to record this video because you know he was a pretty honest guy at least convincingly honest, as well as very level-headed. Uh, as I said earlier, you guys can reach out to Yamastili if you want to know more about this. Uh, I, I figured some of you guys would be interested in the story, and uh, I, I could use all the views I can lately, I guess, right? But uh, that's YouTube. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, share it with all your retarded buddies. And uh, if you guys do want to support me further, you can check out frank-stefano.com. Please sign up for the newsletter to stay in touch. Um, but that'll be it for today, and I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.